The Battle of Caloocan. In 1899, after the capture of La Loma, Brigadier General Arthur MacArthur headed towards Caloocan. His way to get to the area is by train along with Filipino soldiers that was inside the carts of the steam engine. While the Brigadier General was on his way, General Antonio Luna, alongside with Belgian engineer Jose Alejandrino, tried to defend the trenches of Caloocan from the foreign enemies. According to a primary source, an article made by Edward Streetmayer entitled Under Otis in the Philippines. He described the capture of Caloocan where Filipino defendants are fighting stubbornly in order to resist and push back the American in which every step that they take, the Americans find a way to push forward to victory. Even with the best efforts of the Filipinos, they still won't surrender the area. Instead, they will take down the area with along with them, showing that they will never cower down to the Americans, in which they did by burning down the main portion of the town. The houses in to large flames, those that have been interrupted and captured was taken as prisoners for interrogation and death. After the bloodbath battle, at half past five, the old glory was raised and swung into the skies, indicating that the Americans have already taken over the main portion of Caloocan, and the only remaining standing that saw all the blood massacre of the area was the Casa Tribuna, the main church of the area. But the battle was far from over, hence there were still settlements that are fighting with love for the country. On the other side of Cavite, the Cavite Battalion refused the orders of General Antonio Luna to assist in the Battle of Caloocan. Mm -hmm. Knowing the hot temper of the general, they removed them from their duties and as a counter from his act, soldiers from the same battalion later assassinated Luna at Cabanatuan, Nueva Ecija on June 5, 1899. This was truly a sad moment for one of the greatest generals of the Philippines, in which that can lead to the victory of the Philippines died in the hands of the same countrymen. The Igorots, the local mountaineers of Cordilleras of Northern Luzon, sent contingent men to assist in the battles of Caloocan. Surprisingly, they are only armed with primitive weapons such as spears, axes, and shield, in which made native Filipinos are truly remarkable when it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat. They have been leaded by Ma Federico Belong Abaya, a native of Candon. He was part of the group Espiritu de Candon, a revolutionary group of the area. After he had died in the battle along with 10 men, which two were captured, some of the Igorots left out the Philippine army and became allies of the U.S. as they served as guides for American troops in the highlands of northern Luzon. A Tinguan Igorot, Wanario Galut, led U.S. troops to a position where they could surround and defeat the forces of General Gregorio del Pilar at Tirad Pass on December 2, 1899. At the end, Caloocan still fell under the hands of the foreign. According to Captain David Elliott, the 20th Kansas Volunteers stated that there were no native Filipinos left alive, in which they were expecting that the area would have more than 7,000 inhabitants and prisoners, and yet not even one was ready to surrender. The reason for this, to the journal of Charles Bremer of Minneapolis, Kansas, when prisoners are brought back, to the settlement will only have a short amount of time to live, hence Captain Bishop orders his men to execute them immediately by facing the wall and put bullet holes on each person they can. The Battle of Marilla River In the Battle of Marilla River, it was short, yet it was very important in the war. General Pantaleon Garcia came all the way from the Gupan, Pangasinan province, along with more than 1,000 riflemen and more than 4,000 Bola men that took position in Marilao. On March 27, 1899, there were conflicts between the group of Garcia and seven U.S. regiments that resulted the group of Garcia to be assaulted. With that, Garcia placed the 1st South Dakota Volunteers on the 3rd U.S. Artillery 
as the front lines in battle. With the heavy front lines of the United States, the Filipinos didn't move back and stubbornly stayed in position. Until later on, on that day, decreased the numbers drastically. They were forced to retreat that it seems there were only a few casualties suffered on the enemy lines of the Filipinos. In this, we can learn that when there is conflict inside another conflict, the strongest will still prevail even though that you have a stubborn fighting spirit. The Battle for Batangas the final battle that ended the Philippine-American War was held at Batangas and it created a vital role towards the end of the war. After that, President Emilio Aguinaldo pledged allegiance with the Americans. Many areas around the Philippines still fought, thinking that the war is still pushing through. To those who have received the news, felt that the Filipino cause was over. When the Americans forbade the Philippine flag from being flown anywhere in the country, Batangas was one of the places where the revolutionaries chose to propagate their propaganda. The last standing and fighting, General Miguel Malvar, took over the leadership on what has been left in the Filipino government. He had taken the final defensive and offensive stance against the foreign invaders. He hauled an all-out attack against the captured American towns. General Vicente Lucban and other officers that stayed with love for the country fought all out in their respective areas around the country. Many of the revolutionary artists chose Batangas as a location to perform their plays and other artistical events. According to the diary of Amelia Bonifacio, the performance Tani Kalang Ginto, made by Juan Abad, a nationalist themed story of freedom and love. The meaning behind the performance is to show the current situation that the Filipinos during those times are being held by the Americans and how we hungrily wanted freedom and love. During the performance, the audience and performers were arrested and the play was banned to be shown anywhere in the country. Despite all the efforts and sacrifices of our countrymen, women, and children, General Bell Perus Malvar and his men that made a large amount of Malvar's men surrender. General Malvar fought hard and finally surrendered along with his sick wife and children on April 16, 1902. The final push was given. With General Malvar captured, the Filipino war effort began to dwindle drastically. The Battle of the Tulyahan River the Battle of the Tulyahan River was composed of related engagements of the American troops. These were battles at Malabon, Caloocan, San Francisco del Monte, Polo, Malinta, and May Kawayan. These battles lasted for two days at most, specifically from March 25, 1899 up until March 26, 1899. It was recorded that there were 16 Americans who were killed and 130 were wounded. On the side of the Filipinos, there were 125 who were killed and 500 who were wounded. This was during the advance at Malabon. The advance to Malabon was documented by Anthony Mikea, a member of the 3rd Artillery. He said they encountered a place called Malabon and they brought hell upon it. He also stated that whenever they saw locals, either a man or a woman or a child, they spared no one. Yet he also said that they felt remorse for having to see such an agonizing sight. On the side of the locals, he stated that they have captured some of the American troops and these locals also had no pity for the Americans as these locals were dismembering them giving the Americans the license to spare no locals during the encounter. Huts were burned during the battle as a way for the locals to not take cover. The Philippine-American War It was said that the Americans had no reason for having to colonize the country. The United States of America, according to Woods, is already rich in resources and colonies. Yet, it was then taken aback when a sudden idea was to expand the reach of the United States. The Philippines' fate was also debated during the Treaty of Paris between the Spanish and the United States. There were already talks of having to stage the Spanish-American War, which the Americans were assured that the Filipinos would think of the United States as an ally. However, during the Philippine-American War, there were statements from the United States saying that the American soldiers saw the Filipino soldiers as subhuman, linking it to the events during the battles. In addition, it was judged that the Philippine-American War was not an act of genocide from the Americans, rather it was an act to counter insurgents. 
it was also given emphasis that the Americans help organize the nations through building schools, roads, also establishing a public health system with the addition of financial reforms. In conclusion, the Philippine-American War had many battles during this time, most of the battles having the Philippines losing. Pillaging was also present during these battles, yet was obvious since it was the time of war. It was also mentioned that the Filipino fighters showcased savagery during these wars, leaving the Americans no choice but to showcase their might, power, and supremacy.